Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hey, welcome, I'm Kenzie's. I create beauty content but primarily makeup content. So today I create this gorgeous pink glam and I shared my top tips and tricks to ensure a flawless beat. If you want to see how I created this look and you want to elevate your base, keep on watching and enjoy. Mwah. You guys know the drill, grab a drink grab a snack, whatever you fancy, and let's get into some makeup. This is an MS Lime and Mint Mocktail. Actually, really nice. It says that you can add some rum to it, but I'm not really an alcohol babe. And I will be going to sleep after this, so just have it by itself. The first thing to make sure that the makeup is makeuping is skin prep. And skin prep is very self-explanatory. It's skin preparation. You are preparing your skin for the makeup that you're going to put on top. And I like to think of skin prep in two dimensions. I like to think of what you are doing long-term in terms of your skincare routine to address your skin concerns, but also your skin types. And I also think of skin prep in the usual way, which is what you are putting on your face immediately before makeup application to prepare your skin for said makeup. So you want to make sure that you're applying makeup to clean skin. I quickly went in and I cleansed my skin with this Sunday Riley Ceramic Slip Cleanser. I really love this cleanser. This cleanser is for all skin types and it has clay in it but it's not drying but it really does do a deep cleanse. So the common denominator between both elements of the skin prep that I just spoke about is exfoliation. You want to make sure that you are exfoliating your skin. You don't want to have dry dead skin on your face that the makeup is going to sort of apply onto. It just doesn't look nice. In your skincare routine you might have a chemical exfoliant or a physical exfoliant that you incorporate on whatever days but you can also also make sure that you are exfoliating right before you put on your makeup. There are several products that you can do this with. Today I went in with the Tatcha Rice Cleanser in Deep. I'm not going to use SPF today just because I am about to go to sleep right after this and it's, I'm filming this at like 10 o'clock in the night. What you want to do is you want to use some sort of toner as well. Um, so I like to go in with this toner. This is the Fresh Kombucha Facial Treatment Essence. Um, this was kindly gifted to me um, by Space and K. So thank you, Space and K. It's basically an essence to prepare your skin for the serums that you're gonna put on top. You can go in with something like the Fenty Skin Milky Toner Essence. I really like this. I do have the original version, but I prefer this. And then you wanna go in with a serum. It's very important to know that not every single skincare product can work with makeup or is formulated to work in conjunction with makeup. There's certain skincare products that I know just will not sit well under makeup and can actually disrupt the finish and the longevity of my makeup. So I'm just very careful and particular with what I use. And this is the MAC Hyperreal Serumizer. This range from MAC, these are makeup skincare hybrids. So this is skincare formulated specifically to work in conjunction with makeup. So I picked this up. This is like your one-stop shop. You can go read the specs for yourself, but this is both a serum and a moisturizer in one, but I'm still gonna go in with the moisturizer after. It's really nice. It has the same smell as the balm and it just it feels so nice on the skin so 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 nice so you can go in with like the cosrx thelmucin polyglutamic acid from the inky list and then one of my faves this is another makeup skincare hybrid this is a glow recipe watermelon niacinamide dew drops this is really nice so these are just options that you can use but you want to use a hydrating serum to hydrate the skin and then you want to go in with a really nice moisturizer if you're lucky your moisturizer will also double up as your primer and you won't need to prime i'm going in with the mac hyper real skin canvas balm in terms of moisturizers that are again formulated to be used with makeup this is one of them the charlotte magic cream is one of them you guys know how much i love that um, the Embryo Leaves Cream is one of them. And also, please remember your lips. Please remember your lips. This is just an e.l.f. exfoliator. Very cheap, very affordable, <laughs> which is new for this channel. Sorry. <laughs> and then after I've used that, I like to go in with my Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. This was also gifted to me from Space NK in their spring 
box. I really appreciate it. And this is the flavor vanilla. I haven't tried this one. This is nice. There's nothing really special about this flavor. I think so far I tried that original red berry one, I think it's called. I like sweet candy. That's my favorite. I do also want to make sure that you are prepping your under eyes. I never used to wear an eye cream like that underneath makeup, but I do definitely notice the difference. I feel like I creased less and the powder is less dry underneath the eye. Uh, the Fenty Skin Flash Nap, this is their Instant Revival Eye Gel Cream. You don't need a lot of eye cream, especially because I'm not going on top of my eye, I'm just taking it underneath. And then I like to rub it in with my eye like this. My hand, sorry. And then if you want, you wanna be extra like me, you can get the tool that this comes with and you literally just use this and it's really nice to soothe and like, Deep puff the eyes especially in the morning my face gets so puffy whilst i sleep and i always wake up looking like a blowfish and you guys know that i also love the pharmacy wake up honey eye cream now that we've covered skin prep that is how one preps the skin let's get into it i always color correct now every foundation every look i will always color correct so this is just the bobby brown skin corrector stick in the shade very deep bisque and i like this because it's not too orange so this is where I put all the color corrector. I like to use a flat top brush to blend it out to maximize the coverage. And so this is just the Charlotte Tilbury jewel ended foundation brush, the Hollywood complexion brush. And I just tap over that color corrector to make sure it's seamlessly blending into the skin. underneath my eyes I like to use this other side just to really get in there by color correcting my skin immediately looks more even meaning my foundation has less work to do it's just about evening out everything all together so whether it be redness hyperpigmentation dark spots blemishes do color correct I promise you it's a game changer. Now, I'm literally only gonna use, I think, a pump of this foundation. That's what I try to use. If I'm underpainting, I use significantly less as well. I end up using like about 0.5, like half a pump. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take like a little tool and I'm just gonna apply it to my face. I'm going in with my Makeup by Mario F4 brush and I'm literally just tapping over that like so. That was one pump of foundation. I didn't do anything off camera. This Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Foundation in the shade 19C. If I didn't say it already, sorry. Um, this is a medium buildable coverage foundation. This is not a full coverage foundation, but do you see how it's just beautifully evened out my complexion? By applying it into my face rather than them working it into the brush, it means that the brush is not soaking up the product as much. But whilst there's a bit on here that's like tinted the bristles of the brush, briefly most of the coverage is still on my face this way okay so this is the hourglass stick foundation i think it's like the veil something um but this is in the shade espresso and i'm gonna use this to contour literally a bit into my palm don't need much of that just like that and if i need more i'll add more so i'm gonna use the other side of that makeup by mario f4 brush and i'm just gonna use this to apply my contour because this is a foundation stick it's super pigmented as well so go in lightly and build up if you're using foundation sticks or you're using this particular product for contour and you literally just want to use this to blend and this is where placement really matters if you have a similar face to me you can contour like this but you need to make sure that you're contouring according to the face shape that you have you'll see i'm hitting my bone i'm hitting the hollow of my cheek i'm hitting my bone right here and brushes like this that are this shape 
but also brushes like the Patrick Ta Four Contour um, brushes. Those are like the perfect ideal shape to use to blend out your contour. So I know that Sephora have a brush like this, the Sephora 47 Pro brush, the PC21 brush from Peaches and Cream. But those are just a few options for you as well. Just using this to gently build up a wash of color, color, a wash of color on the parameters of my face. I'm going to use the rest of the contour that's on my hand and I'm going to use the Patrick Ta 4 Contour 3 brush. This ends to quickly just create a nice contour. And I like to throw that into the front of my brow. So this is what the face looks like right now. I'm loving. And the key is to blend. So now I'm gonna go in with my Rare Beauty blush in the shade Grace. To blend that out, I'm taking another one of these brushes. This is the Sephora 47 Pro brush. And I'm just gonna keep this. Oh my gosh, I forgot that these, I think this is the matte formula. That's one thing to be mindful of with the Rare Beauty blush. There's two different formulas. There's like a matte one and there's a luminous one. Pretty sure this is the matte one and it dries down a little quicker. And you'll notice that I'm putting that like right up underneath my eye. And that's because I want my concealer to sort of blend into this really nicely. So that you just have this flow of color. Literally about that much here and here. And I'm literally just gonna blend that into my contour. I always say this, but another one of my tips is you never ever just want to put blush in one place, so just your cheeks. So yeah, when you put blush like here and here and here, it just makes everything like flow into one in the same way that you're putting concealer all over your face and you're putting contour all over your face in these very important places, you also want to put a bit of blush on other parts of your face other than your cheeks to make sure that everything is just like blending. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Magic Touch Concealer in the shade 14. This concealer is full coverage. Because I primarily used to use a makeup sponge to blend out my concealer, I used to go in with a lot of concealer because I knew that the sponge would soak up the excess. But now that I'm a brush girly, I need to stop that because I just don't need as much concealer as I put on. You'll notice that I did not put any foundation underneath my eyes. I just put on a little bit of color corrector just to neutralize the area. This is something that I try to always do when I'm doing my makeup, but I will take a concealer brush, any concealer brush will do. Um, this one is the Morphe M705 and I'm literally just gonna spread that concealer. Literally spreading it like so, so that you have an even base. And we're gonna take it up into the eye. We're just spreading it like this. And then one of my favorite concealer brushes, and I have not put this down in a while. This is the Hourglass Vanish Concealer Brush. I always say this, but I will always invest in makeup, especially good tools, because they will last you such a long time. This is on the pricier side. Like I said, find a code, find a sale, you'll be all right. <laughs> um, it's just such a good brush. Anyway, so any sort of dense concealer brush, preferably one that is this shape, is gonna help you to sort of keep that product in check. Um, but it's also gonna help you seamlessly blend out the concealer whilst retaining the coverage of it. And I'm literally just tapping like this. I forgot. Another thing that I like to do is start with the edges of the concealer. And I work my way upwards Ugh. it's fine let's just blend the edges and by blending the edges of the concealer first you're basically allowing the center to dry down so that when you're blending it you're almost blending dry concealer not entirely dry you don't want that but you want the coverage to stay 
in the center, which is why you would blend the edges first. And this is a lot to remember. And you just basically have to incorporate these things into every, like every time you do your makeup, have like a mental checklist or if need be a physical one to remember to do these things. And then it just becomes automatic. And then to marry both my contour, foundation and concealer together, I'm actually gonna go back in with that foundation brush again. And we're blending at the edge of where we applied that concealer just so that there's a seamless blend another one of my tips is once you have finished blending out your concealer and everything and your whole face and you're ready to set your face do take a hand mirror and essentially rotate this around your whole face <laughs> like so and look at your face from every single angle so that you can see whether or not you have indeed blended as much as possible there is only so much that you can do once you have set down your foundation with powder okay so now we're gonna blend I look crazy right now. Back in with your blush brush. One of my tips is something that I always do. Always go back in with brushes that you have before. This is why I use several different tools so that when I use different tools, I still have some of that product left on those tools so I can go back in and reinforce and blend and do whatever I need to do. So I'm gonna go in with my Huda Beauty loose powder in the shade Banana Bread. I'm gonna use my Trigwell powder puff. I like to coat my powder puff like this, so I get the sides, I get the tip, and then I basically will, in the palm of my hand, push that powder into the puff. Go back in with your brush and really blend that out and go in with your puff, of course. Gonna take your time and set the under eye and I'm using significantly less powder just because I feel like sometimes I go overboard in the powder and then I will obviously fix it with fixing spray but you just don't need that powder that much powder. I'm gonna work in layers so I just added another layer of this powder and I have a tendency to bring my powder out too far over my blush and veil that colour. I don't want to do that so I'm literally just gonna take the side of the sponge and just go over the very edge of that powder and we're going to do the same thing around the rest of my face and come back i know it doesn't look like it but i definitely did use less powder okay please i'm going to reinforce my contour and i'm going to do that with my fenty beauty sun sparkle bronzer in the shade coco naughty if there's ever a bronzer that i will use for the rest of my life it would be this one closely followed by the nars matte bronzers chef's kiss and then i'm just literally taking this this end of the brush this is the patrick tar full contour 2 this is just like the perfect shade coco naughty is the perfect shade and you literally don't need a lot that's why i love it's just such a beautiful and this brush as well gorgeous and we're just taking that to literally set bronzer i will say this brush does like diffuse out a lot so like it spreads out i hope they come out with a smaller one i think they did they are sorry i did see patrick tar tease an unreleased brush so i'm gonna need that asap another one of my tips for nose contour go in with your foundation powder that actually matches your skin tone so your usual foundation powder i'm going to use this one size 10 up the base versatile foundation powder in the shade dark 2n and i'm going in with that same patrick tar four contour three brush but i've just wiped off that cream contour on there and i'm literally just taking this to contour the nose and you don't need much at all And then you can basically go in with like a lighter powder on top if you want to emphasize that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in with another one size 
foundation powder but this time in the shade medium dark one and i'm just taking just any eyeshadow brush but you want to take one that is slightly pinched at the end and just run this down the nose You see, easy contour, easy contour, easiest contour that you'll ever do. I actually really like that. You guys see me use this powder literally all the time, but I've got a different shade because I'm gonna use it to set my foundation. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Fullest Finish Powder in the shade Tan 3. If you're wondering about the packaging, um, this is for the Luna 2023 year. I did have the shade 4 Deep. I actually made my foundation um, go a bit neutral and dark as well. It just wasn't flattering to set my foundation I'm just taking this the 121 blush and bronze brush and we're literally lightly setting this is slightly like Cool tone. So I'm literally just using a bit so that it doesn't shift the color of my foundation Um, I didn't realize that I have like loads of texture on my face right now like these little small fine bumps all over so i'm not usually allergic to fragrance but i used this aloe vera gel on my face and it had fragrance in it and this is the result <sighs> texture is normal but i know that my skin doesn't look like this normally so it's like very irritating anyway we move let's go let's go let's go we still haven't sprayed setting spray but my face looks like apart from the texture my face looks like very flawless this is the morphe v106 brush the lottie london blush ombre blush in the shade red hot there's two shades if you can see because it's an ombre blush duh <laughs> so i'm gonna use the darker shade and this is yeah this is quite pigmented this is nice and I'm just feathering this on my cheek. Oh, I like this colour. Then just a little bit of hair. A little bit on my nose. A little bit over here. Over here. On the chinny chin chin. Bob is your uncle. Okay, I'm going to take one of my favourite blush brushes. This is the Makeup by Ariel X Morphe A22. And because it is an ombre blush, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lighter side of the ombre blush, like so. I'm going to just take this right underneath the eye like this. So this is another one of my tips, mid-tone blushing. When I mid-tone blush, I can definitely tell the difference. Like your eye, like the makeup just looks a lot more seamless and you just have that blush really go nicely into the under eye and look at the difference i know you see, i know you i know you see the difference don't play yourself mid-tone blush today okay and sorry if i didn't explain my bad mid-tone blushing is basically when you take a mid-tone blush so a blush that is in between your blush shade your main blush color so that dark shade that i used and your concealer shade. Um, you can obviously just find a blush that is lighter um, or you can simply mix the blush that you used, your main blush, with your under eye powder and voila, you have your mid-tone blush. Do you see, look at this. Chat to me nicely. Okay, so it's getting a bit late. When it gets late, I begin to get delirious. I come out my shell a bit more. Okay, this is what's too. And you can literally go all the way underneath your eye with like the brush just to really blend everything in and I promise you, you will look crazy, okay? Trust me. I mean, what are you here for? <laughs> it's time for the piece de resistance. Piece de resistance. I'm now going to go in with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the shade number two actually i like to put this on after i want to go in with a setting spray and a fixing spray it's very important that you go in with a fixing spray before you go in with your setting spray because often time your setting spray is simply just going to lock in what is there i'm not really using my setting spray for the finish it's mo it's more so just for the setting powers so i like to go in with a 
fixing spray press. This is the Morphe Coconut Bliss uh, Continuous Setting Mist. Going in with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. This is the Vive Muse palette. If you didn't know, Vive is owned by Jamie Genevieve. Yes, her brand. Um, Jamie Genevieve is literally one of my favorites. Should we do some ASMR? Should we do some, should we do some ASMR? And we're gonna get into some some eyeshadow. I have a vision, okay? This is what this sh shadow It's nearly midnight and I'm fighting my words now <laughs> um, So I just blacked out my eyes very quickly Jouer Okay, so I use it should just go in with this Jouer high coverage liquid concealer in the shade rich ginger and then I've gone in and I have Set that with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder in the shade 2 Medium. To do both, I use one side to pat out the concealer and then the other side to uh, pat in the powder to set that concealer. I used this Morphe V205 brush, Fenty Beauty Bronzer. I'm going to put that all over. I use this as a base for most eyeshadows. This is a Chem K05. So I use this as a transition shade between my underbrow concealer and whatever I'm doing on my lids. I'm gonna just push that out into your contour. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with the shade Merlot. I'm just taking Merlot, like, around here. I'm just figuring this out as I'm going. You notice the motion, I'm taking that in. I'm literally going here, here. I'm avoiding the center, because I think I have an idea what I wanna do like so it's like a pink a nice pink and this is a by jungle me8 brush and i'm just going to take that shade velvet and we're just going to take the velvet like this across the lid hold on have i done this actually before Oh, it's feeling awfully similar to something I've done before, but we're here now. Go back in the brush that you were using before and blend those two together. So I literally just applied some of this REM Beauty liquid eyeshadow. This is in the shade Nevermind NVM. Um, and I felt like this is the only thing that could save this eyeshadow because I don't know what I'm doing. Right. And I just blended that out with a A20 brush. And it hasn't lifted anything underneath, do not jinx that. Okay, this looks actually all right. just gone on top of that with the shade Love from that Vive palette and then I'm actually going to take Peony like right in the middle here just to brighten up. This is really pretty. Feels like adding a little bit of violet here to create like a wing. I've done a few things off camera. So I have added these Lily Lashes. These are the Lily Lashes in the style Bonded. These, these are the magnetic ones, but I've used just normal eyelash glue. I've added these gems from Half Magic Beauty. And now I need to go in and add my favorite powder. My final tip is making sure that you finish your makeup with a finishing powder. I always use this powder. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Fours Finish in the shade 2 Medium. Just taking this Makeup by Ariel A14 brush. I literally spent ages trying to curl these two pieces. This one came out really nice and this one was giving me problems. And I passed that straightener over these two pieces like 10 times just to have them straight again. 
Time for lip combo. So this is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in the shade Limitless Brown. I'm using that to line my lips. So now I'm going in with this Huda Beauty lipstick. This is the cream lipstick in the shade Bossy Brown Raja. Raja is the shade, but it's from the Bossy Brown collection. You can literally leave it like this, but I'm gonna add some gloss. Hourglass, Unreal Gloss in the shade Child. I don't really like the applicator on this, it's a bit funny. Yeah. So this is the finished look and I love, I feel like, even though I really didn't know what I was doing with my eyeshadow, the gems just hold everything together. I really, really love how this looks. I love this lip combo. I cannot put it down. I literally cannot. It looks so gorgeous and it's so nice because it's got those pink tones that interact with the eyeshadow. Chef's kiss. Yeah, I think the base looks so nice and flawless and I love my blush. Like I said, sometimes I forget to do these tips that I told you guys, but when I do, you can definitely tell the difference and it doesn't even feel like I'm wearing makeup, honestly. It's so light and it looks so light and nice in person, in real life. Sometimes I wish I could just, you know, just <laughs> climb through the screen that you guys can actually see that the makeup is indeed giving all of that and more. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna end this video out here. Thank you ever so much for watching. See you in the next one. But until then, take care. Bye. Mwah.